welcome to my channel where we make art videos and painting tutorials for um, this week's video I thought I'd do some art tips and hacks that I've been using throughout my career if we may call it that the first tip I have that will instantly give you better results with your artwork is using the right lights and the right bulbs for your lamps if you're using daylight that's amazing daylight is great but since winter is approaching uh, we don't have as many light hours and some of you may be going to school or work during that time of the day so a good idea is to get a couple of bulbs that have cold light white light for me that is a 4000 kelvin it says it right in the box on any light bulbs you'll find at the hardware store at the superstore wherever you go even at ikea they have them anything beneath 4000 kelvin is going to give you yellow light and i cannot tell you how many times i've painted a nice sketch a nice drawing uh in my living room lights which are yellow lights and i like it but on the next day once i have the chance to look at it in sunlight it looks like somebody threw up on it that's because i was looking at it with inaccurate lighting because i make youtube videos i have a couple of soft boxes in which i use these bulbs and let me tell you i've purchased them for about a euro each they can be very inexpensive and it's just a very nice way to boost your art overall i even have one of these bulbs set up at my ceiling lamp when i don't have time to put up uh, all of my equipment out in my bedroom so i can still make art and get good accurate results previously to this setup i just had one of these tiny work desk lamps you can even get a tertiary lamp from ikea and they're amazing just put in a cold light bulb and you're going to see some instant results with that my next step everybody keeps asking me how to stop their tape from ripping apart their paper here I'm going to show you three ways. Uh, for the first piece of tape, I'm just going to stick it onto a sketchbook without any prep done to it. For the second one, it's a hack that's all over the internet. I'm just going to tape it to my jeans a couple of times to get some of the fibers on the tape. But what that does is it just gets the tape all icky and yucky and stuff. Especially if you have pets around the house, I don't recommend this tip. It does work, but it does get a bit gross. The third one, I just tape it to the smooth side of my arm so I don't give myself uh, body wax accidentally. Just to get the right amount of sticky, non-sticky situation going on. And now you can see the first one is instantly ripping off my paper from my sketchbook. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, there are two big strips all along the piece of tape. The second one obviously goes off smoothly and also the third one which is the simpler and easier one at least in my opinion it comes off very smoothly without any uh, tears in the paper the third tip i have you can just use your tape as normal as regularly and use a hair dryer on low heat setting because heat dissolves the glue and this goes these tips go for normal masking tape for washi tape uh, clear office tape whatever you have they work with any kind of tape without uh, any issues and if you're wondering about this roll of masking tape i just got it for a dollar from for a euro from my local hardware store in the painting section I'm just showing that it comes straight off clear without any issues and the reason we tape our paper is so it limits the buckling the amount of waviness we get in a page the sketchbook has about 50 paintings all watercolor in it and it has very minimal buckling this other one I got for about two euros is 200 GSM and I'm going to it's very cheap quality no brand no nothing this is a little wet on wet painting i did you can see it has again very minimal buckling very minimal warping because i live because i leave that space that border uh, between my painting and the edge of the sketchbook my fifth tip is for watercolor pencils you can prepare in advance little mixing cards with colors that you're missing in your palette 
let's say you have a limited palette like me, maybe you have just 12 pencils, I don't have any violets or purples, so I take some red color and then some blue, I layer it one on top of the other, and that way I don't have to buy a bigger set, I don't have to buy additional colors, I can mix the color I want in advance for a certain painting. I'm going to do this with a different shade of red and a different shade of blue just to give some examples for the sake of this video. Just some thin blue on top of some crimson red. And then with a damp brush I go over, I activate these small areas and you can see I get this lovely lilac slash prune color. And the better the quality of your uh, art supplies, the better the color payout you'll get from this technique. You can even make bigger cards to carry in your pencil case and your uh, sketchbook even and your, uh, I don't know, in your backpack. It's just a little tip that saves you space and it saves you money as well since you don't have to buy more supplies. Next on the list is a little known art supply, it's an eraser pen, so it has eraser within the body of a pencil and you can use this to clean up any leakages, any spills or splatters on a painting because it can erase both watercolors and watercolor pencils and you can sharpen it to get a very fine point once it gets dirty, you can just tear it off with your nails and that's it. Which brings us to the seventh tip for this video, that's how do you clean your art surface, your painting surface. And I tried with acetone, I tried with alcohol, I had all sort of art supplies gunked up on my desk and then it hit me, well I can just use the things I use to clean up my artwork, to clean up my art space. So I use an eraser or even the eraser pencil to clean up uh, some splashes, especially if you have staining colors like Thalo Blues and similar. For my eighth tip, uh, the GSM of the paper, the actual thing we use to measure paper, does not matter in any way to how the paper will perform while painting. It's just a measurement that says how much a square meter of X paper weighs on a scale. It has nothing to do with the actual performance. And that's why I usually use 200 GSM and it's more than enough for most paintings. What you need to be looking for is an agent called sizing. And what that does, it's actually uh, agent manufacturers put incorporate with the mixture of the paper while producing it and it just dictates how paper is going to behave once it gets in contact with um, with water. That's why we don't use printing paper, notebook paper, because they have very little to no sizing. You can find all of this information on various manufacturers' websites, how they use it, what's their formula, etc. Which brings us up to my ninth tip, and that's that pigments, the same pigments, the same colors, are going to look different on different papers. Here you can see a generic sketchbook I got for a Euro 50 against some Canson paper. The same colors and you can see a significant difference, one is much more vibrant. That's why whenever I get a new sketchbook by a new brand, I like to swatch out my colors so I will know what they are going to look like. I'm going to show you my Bango watercolor set on the generic 1 euro 50 sketchbook versus Fabriano which is a very known brand of paper and you can see a tremendous difference with uh, the brown, the purple, the indigo etc. My 10th tip, I did not invent this, I'm just uh, cleaning up a bowl of water to get myself a little uh, cup for painting and what I do is I cut out two W's opposite of each other, that way I can uh, place my brushes in a manner that saves them, that prevents damage. I, it also gives me a bit of an angle so they dry without getting any of the water in the barrel itself. That way they're going to last much longer and save me money long term. And with my 12th tip, that is about masking film because many people complain that masking film ruins their brushes. But actually, we can prevent that by simply 
adding a couple of lumps of dish soap or hand soap into your water, stir that up with a brush, and it's going to protect the bristles from uh, the masking film or the masking liquid. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Please let me know in the comments down below. Special thank you to my patron, Megan, and we'll see each other in the next video.